Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We'll see the remaining slides. Okay. So project budgeting activities. So these are the budgeting activities. Project budgeting activities. First, you should set the overall budget, target budget. Then, what is target budget? Target budget is a estimated amount of money. It is an estimated amount of money. It is estimated amount of money used for the project, and it is a combination of um, operating. It's a combination of operating and exp operation operating methods and capital expenses. Yes. So actually, it is used as mainly as a as a financial goal. It is used as a financial goal for budget plan. Okay. Then um, what is the WBS? You know work breakdown structure. You know this and identify the key costs. So key costs are what key costs like material, like material. Then you have uh, components of project, components of the project. Then you have uh, overheads. Overheads are what actually they are the um, like uh, cost needed to maintain like uh, cost to for example if you want any machinery you have to uh, see the renting uh, how to rent those machines if you are not available it's not available in the um, company then um, when any in any case of any like uh, machines when they break down what would be done to repair and replace so all this is taken into as a overheads then labor then also labor labor costs labor costs then transportation costs. Transportation costs, then research and R and D, research and development. So all these are the um, key costs to take into consideration. Then resource loading. What is resource loading? Resource loading actually it is the uh, allocating. It's a fund for allocating the resources to, to do the activities at right time. So it is the resources. It is the fund. It is the fund. allocated by the manager allocated by project manager at right time in need of any need of resource when in need of any help when there is any need of any help uh, for the resource is actually called as a resource loading it can be you can also calculate the employees working hours and also allocation of various it also can act as an uh, allocation of working hours for employees yeah working hours OT is over time. Then also uh, various other tasks for the project. Okay. Then what about estimating? Cost estimating actually actually is like forecasting. It is actually a process of forecasting. It's a process of forecasting the financial and other resources to complete the project. Okay. And cost estimation uh, estimation amounts for the amount of project. Like for example, all the material material to labor material to labor cost also it calculates amount of uh, the how to complete the project budget that is budget of the project apart from these labor and material costs okay then cost allocation cost allocation develop a cost allocation cost allocation actually it is a, a cost of several objects such as um, like products products then departments then uh, it's also used because it's also used as a cost not directly traceable to specific objects like accountants actually they made uh, more efforts to improve these uh, techniques and uh, these allocations actually you know they are not uh, directly traceable so they are not directly directly traceable and the accountants they they are in charge for this accountants are in charge for managing these uh, cost allocation methods then finally, we have a contingency reserve. This contingency plan is a reserve plan. Actually, what is this? Actually, these are the is used to manage, identify, identify, identified risks. Very important, identified risks. And while management reserve, you know, there is another one like management reserve is used to manage unidentified risks. So this contingency risk is used to manage identified risks. But there are there is another one more risk known as management risk. So this unidentified, unidentified risk. So we are going to see here it is identified risk, and it uh, has a certain uh, like budget, like a uh, figure, figure how much it is and what is the uh, amount like that. What is the what is the way, what is the nature of risks? So this actually it is a uh, percentage. Then usually the ma the project manager has an authority. Usually the project manager has the authority to 
manage this risk to manage this risk related to this contingency reserve plan extra actually talks about the duration and percentage then we have cost classification see cost classification actually there are different types of costs like uh, direct cost indirect cost then what are these direct costs direct costs like you have direct material like direct material then price i mean sorry piece wage uh, types piece wage uh, piece rate piece rate wages then you have manufacturing suppliers details manufacturing supplies okay then talks about commissions commission um indirect indirect cost actually talks about like supervision salaries of about supervision supervisor supervisors salary then quality control cost insurance you know talks about depreciation yeah all these uh cost related to is known as indirect cost then reoccurring and non occurring cost reoccurring costs like uh, cost of any expenses that is known first you are, you know that this expense will happen this known and the non recurring is one kind of expenses that are uh, they occur irregularly yeah they occur irregularly and there are ir ir irregular intervals and they are sometimes difficult they are sometimes difficult to plan in the uh, required budget so sometimes it is difficult to compensate the required it is difficult it is difficult mm. sometimes it's difficult to manage in the required budget okay then fixed and variable cost fixed very fixed cost like you have that uh, uh, like includes rent rent for the buildings rent for the buildings then machinery so these are the fixed cost variable cost do that they vary they vary and generally very variable cost they related to the capital and labor salary sometimes they do because they do some overtime all these variable cost including wages wages then materials used in production materials used in production sometimes they use more materials in production so this all varies then uh, finally you have normal and expected uh, cost normal cost is refers to the cost at normal operation it is normal okay it is normal cost for normal operation and they are for example they are um, Uh, for example, in, in unplanned operations and unplanned uh, working hours, sometimes they also uh, have unplanned working hour costs, and they, for example, then they are done, they are compensated, and they, sometimes they have unplanned working hours. Sometimes there are unplanned working hours, so that also should be taken into consideration as normal working hours. Whereas the expected cost is something uh, which is not planned; it happens suddenly, like breakdown. So all these are the expected uh, costs. Then, so then we have classifying costs. Project manager, like, look at the cost items from a different angle. How they are look, so that nothing is missed. So, because you don't want to create any barriers or any lag. See, you have to see a different angle to, so that nothing is missed. Then, to develop uh, something like strategies to allocate and manage different types of cost strategies means methods. then how do you demonstrate the amount of resources needed for the project over time like we have through the workers equipment materials then you have known as uh, used as a resource learning what is resource learning it is a technique to start and finish the dates is a technique in which start and finish dates are adjusted start and finish dates are finish dates are adjusted that's very very important okay they are adjusted actually they are adjusted based on the resource limitation based on the resource limitation with the resource limitation yes based on with with, with respect to the goal with respect to with respect to goal and uh, of balancing the resources and uh, uh, like for example you will balance the supply and demand it's very very important uh, here it has given delay activities to eliminate some work segments of activities then substitute less resources consuming activities then substitute resources so these are given here just because these are uses of resource leveling okay 
then to form a base for the cost labor cost estimate you should form a base for the labor cost estimate so what are these um, in, uh, uh, cost estimate methods so there are some four methods like expert opinion analogy regression bottom up estimating what is this expert opinion expert opinion actually it is a demand it is a demand is a demand forecasting method is a demand forecasting method it's a demand forecasting method actually it is a responses acquired from the experts to be analyzed in by an independent party that will provide a feedback on the panel of members so it is actually experts they are the experts who are analyzed by an independent party they are the actually uh, responses from experts and it is analyzed by an independent party so it will provide the feedback for the panel it will provide the feedback to the panel members to the panel members based on the uh, like based on the uh, responses of individuals so each expert has each expert is asked to make a each expert then do a revised forecast like experience of managers group of experts so this is how it is done so demand forecasting response from the man, uh, experts is actually uh, responses from the experts are uh, actually reviewed by the independent party and they give the feedback by to the panel members they, they produce the revised forecast and what is the analogy analogy is a comparison between one thing and another analogy is a comparison analogy is a comparison between one thing and other it's a comparison technique like how a variable of interest or dependent variable like for example i mean sorry like typically like uh, talks about uh, like compare giving comparison like uh, light as a feather light as feather like this you compare something with the other one see comparing regression regression actually it is uh, like um, how a data is driven it is predictive uh, model it talks about how a variable of interest uh, dependent variable it talks about how the variable of interest then dependent dependent variable how it is affected by the independent variable how is affected by the independent variable how it is affected this is how regression is done then we have uh, bottom up estimating is based on the wbss work breakdown structure it is a management technique in which people are going to do the work take part in the estimating process so people who are doing the work they take part in the estimating process okay sometimes estimates are amount of work sometimes they are like amount of work duration also cost to perform the task so these are all done as a uh, bottom up estimating then we have cost allocation and management methods so finally we have cost allocation and management methods is very important first we can see cost allocation management methods first is a design for manufacturing design for manufacturing is what is dfma actually this is a design approach this is a design approach this is a design approach very very important design approach because uh, it is uh, it focuses on ease it focuses on the ease to focus on the ease of manufacturing it focuses on the ease of manufacturing and it is the efficiency uh, manufacture and efficiency of assembly efficiency of assembly so it's manufacture and efficiency of assembly so uh, main main uh, work of this design for manufacturing assembly is that it simplifies the design of the product it simplifies the design it simplify the design of the product so so that is easy to manufacture and assemble efficiently with minimum time and cost so is very very important that is design for manufacturing and assembly then we have cost worth analysis that is uh, usually they say uh, we have to combinedly say that function cost worth analysis they say like this and the main aim is that value we giving value to the design of the product we are giving value we are giving value to the design product 
we are giving the value to the design of product okay um, actually uh, it it talks about the optimum value of the manufacturer to the customer giving optimum value to the to the manufacturer and customer then it is a uh, you know value engineering it is actually a step by step analysis for continuous improvement it is a step by step you have this value engineering is actually worth analysis is a step by step analysis we're giving value to the step by step analysis giving value to the products and service giving value to the products and service this is how it deals with cost worth analysis then activity based costing what is this activity based costing abc it identifies activities in organization and assigns the cost of each activity to all products and services according to the actual consumption so this is resources are assigned to activities and activities to cost objects based on consumption so it is identifies the activities identifies the activities and assigns cost then cost of each activity since cost of each activity so to all products to all products to all products and services according to the consumption according to the use consumption means according to the use okay then what is this uh, like for example this um, has allocation of indirect cost so what is allocation allocation means you know allocation usually occurs like indirect costs like cost of subject example indirect costs like rent mm, office supplies rent office supplies so all these are indirect costs then uh, utilities so these are the indirect costs then we have uh, total quality management total quality management actually it is a um, technique to satisfy the customer to satisfy the customer like whatever how the customer is feeling happy when you give the products to him based actually it is a participative systematic approach with good with proper with proper planning and implementation see it actually it approaches uh, like customer expectation mainly about customer expectations customer expectations then also it has a uh, like i identifies the problems it identify problems then it builds commitment then uh, it it promotes open discussion among workers as quality circles there is a concept known as quality circle actually it is a concept used to find out the problem in the workers and to give a solution regarding any work related activities and it is actually a big uh, area it talks about six sigma it talks about quality circle and there are many tools so this how a customer can be made satisfied and what are the production techniques like you have a jit system and uh, here we have a jit system here then also it talks about six sigma all these details are very very uh, briefly explained in tkm total quality management then we have non identified non value added activity it doesn't add any value there is no uh, there is it is like a, there is no significant proportion of work process in organization so this uh, like it doesn't add, like an action is taken it does not increase the worth of what delivered to the customer so actually it is like an action taken that does not increase the worth of does not increase the worth of what is delivered to customer 
So it does not add any value to the product. So there is only non-value added activity. And just in time is the Japanese technique. It's a Japanese technique. It's a Japanese method. Yes, the Japanese method. And it talks about uh, it was framed by the TPS. That is Toyota Production System. It is actually it is the Toyota Production System. And this is methodology to reduce times so methodology to reduce time within the production system. So it's methodology to reduce the time within the reduce time within the production system. Then also, actually, it is uh, it creates more response from the suppliers to customers from suppliers to customers because it, has, it says that production to be done on time on time no delay on time no delay okay so finally we have supply chain management supply chain management it is actually a, a alignment with coordination with supply chain it refers to everything that it can produce a product from raw materials to manufacturing shipping and support so actually such chain it refers to uh, everything everything to produce a product from raw material to manufacturing then shipping and customer support 